Hey guys, I'm Jade Holding from Photo Factor. Welcome to this five part series of getting to understand layers in Photoshop. In this, the fourth part of the series, we're going to show you how to add images to a layer design. So let's dive straight in. So we already have an image here that has multiple layers. Uh, and so we want to now add additional images into this composition. And like all things in Photoshop, there are many ways in which we can do this, but I'm going to show you the place embedded method. And this automatically creates a new layer for each added image, giving you the freedom to size and position each image as you like. So the way we do this is we go up to the file menu, scroll down to place embedded, and this will open up the finder uh, window or a file explorer window if you're working on a Windows machine. Navigate to the file you wish to add. In this case, it's this image over here. Once I'm happy, we just go to place. We click on that. And no matter what the size of the image is relative to the initial file you are working in, Photoshop will automatically scale it to fit. Now, it's much bigger than I want it to be. So I can now then manually drag in the corner. I want it to be more or less the same, well, not more or less, exactly the same size as this orange flower layer. hiding behind the orange flower, flower layer because of the layers that were selected when I actually placed the image. Once I'm happy, I can just go to this click tick mark icon, hit click on that. Let's just expand the layers menu here. And you'll see, yeah, it's sitting between the orange flower layer and the pink flower layer. Let's give it a more appropriate name. We just double click on that. And let's call it blue sky and hit enter when we're happy with our new name. Now you'll notice this little icon here, which has appeared, which the other layers don't have. And what this means is we have placed this layer as a smart object, which for certain editing techniques is very useful. And so this is a great default way in which to place layers. But what it does mean is that some edits can't be applied directly to this layer. Um, and so let's say, for example, we want to paint on this layer, like I showed you in the earlier tutorial, we've selected the brush tool, uh, we've got a size brush we want. And so if we scroll over to the image, you'll see this little cannot do icon appears. And so if I click on here, this little warning prompt comes up telling me this smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. And what that means is that this layer will be converted into a regular pixel based layer, which because I want to now brush on it, it's fine. I can just click on OK and proceed to paint over it. Let's just go back a few steps. So you might be wondering now, well, why would we want to do that uh, if we're going to have to change the layer into a regular layer anyway? Let me just show you here. Once we've rasterized the layer, that little icon has now disappeared. Just bear with us here. If we place, uh, if we place layers as smart objects, certain editing, which is by, by, by far the most kind of editing you're going to want to do on layers, becomes really useful having this as a smart object. We'll expand upon this more uh, in a future tutorial. However, it's quite fine to just rasterize the layer and proceed as per normal for now. And then just before wrapping up, I'm going to bring your attention to these very useful guides that Photoshop provides for us. And so let's just say we want to make sure all our layers are perfectly in alignment. Uh, we go on to the blue sky layer. If I click on this and start to move it around, you'll see these pink lines start to appear. 
And this is just a useful way of me getting to make sure that all my layers are perfectly aligned. And so when it starts to make its way near the middle of the, of the image, you'll see there one appears uh, showing me the dead center vertical and horizontal axis. So if I wanted to make sure that's in the middle, I would just move it accordingly. And there we have it. If I want to make sure it's aligned to the layers down below, I just oh, it snaps to to those to those guides. And now you can see that it's dead center in the middle. It's aligned with both the left and the right layer. But I notice now that the gap between this layer and that layer is not the same. And so I need to now adjust these layers accordingly to make sure it's nice and even. You'll notice here it even gives me the values to, to tell me that the gap between the two layers is identical. And so I hope you're going to enjoy creating your own multi-layered images in Photoshop. We have one more session to get through and then we are going to show you how to unlock a background layer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, head on over to the next tour and I'm going to show you. If you found this content to be useful for you, do give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for far more tutorials coming your way. See you at the next session.